This is a great country that has lost its way. When we started with its government in 1997, 13 long years ago, we were the fourth biggest economy in the world. Now, we have the worst debt of any major European country. Worse even than the debt when the last Labour government had to go to the IMF to be bailed out. Only half our school leavers get five good GCSEs. We have a dilapidated infrastructure put to shame by many better managed countries. Violent crime has increased. Family breakdown has increased. We have some of the worst records of youth offending, teenage pregnancy, and family breakdown in Europe. And now we see our country plagued once again with strikes. And instead of a positive government turning things round, facing up to these challenges, we've been saddled with one of the worst governments that any of us can remember. A government that has fiddled endlessly around the edges, set up a new system of banking regulation in 1998 to supervise the top 10 banks. They lost five of them. That sold our gold, almost all our gold, at 278 ounces. The price today is over a thousand an ounce. A loss altogether to our exchequer of some 14 billion pounds. Imagine if a Tory Chancellor had done that, the criticism we would have had. A government that has built up a budget deficit in the good years, unlike other countries, unlike Sweden, unlike Spain, unlike Canada and Australia, they ran up this deficit even when the economy was growing strong. With the result that our debt and the guilt that have to be sold each month to finance it, it is now more expensive for us to finance our debt than it is for the Italians to finance theirs. Gordon Brown is running this country worse than Berlusconi is running Italy. And the national debt itself, as you know, has been doubled in the last 10 years. We will spend more next year on debt interest than on the entire defence and schools budgets put together. That is the waste of economic mismanagement over these years. But it hasn't just been an economic disaster. This government has further fragmented our society. It's encouraged multiculturalism. It's actually made integration of those who've chosen to come here more difficult. They have introduced equality laws which discriminate. Discriminate against those with religious beliefs, like our Christian churches, for example. They have promoted political correctness, which stifles honest expression and simply encourages litigation. <coughs> and they have increased welfare dependency. Over five million now on different various forms of benefit. Over eight million economically inactive. And finally, worst of all, they have failed our young people. Mm -hmm. Nearly one third of those out of work in Sevenoaks are under 25 years of age. Mm -hmm. Now just think that through. That means that they were aged either between 5 and 12 when Labour came to power. It is a Labour government with all its wasteful spending, with all its initiatives and interference in our schools that has failed to equip a whole generation with the right skills and training and schooling that they need to get jobs out there in the labour market. That is an appalling failure of this labour government. And finally, as well as messing up our economy, as well as fragmenting our society, they have weakened our institutions. They failed 
the basic duty of any government to properly fund and equip our armed forces, mm -hmm. sending the very best of our young people out to Iraq mm -hmm. and Afghanistan with uh, mm -hmm. canvas-sided land rovers, mm -hmm. with insufficient helicopters. They've undermined our parliament by setting up rival assemblies in Scotland and in Wales with no counterbalancing protection for England and our own English system here. And of course, they broke their promise and handed more powers away to Brussels under the Lisbon Treaty without even giving us the referendum that they promised to give us at the last election. They have weakened our institutions. That's been bad for Britain. It's been bad for us here in Southern Oaks. Sheer Labour dogma has prevented us getting the additional grammar school places we need here in West Kent. The Kent County Council, by government edict, is not allowed to provide more places because Whitehall under Labour says no. Because they've mismanaged the public finances, having rapidly expanded the NHS and now demanded a 15% cut in our primary care trust expenditure, you will have seen from the interview in the Chronicle with Mr. Phoenix of the primary care trust last week that once again, despite saving it three years ago, the future of our community hospital may be up again in the balance because they have so mismanaged their budgets. And their crude political decisions have moved money away from Seven Oaks Council and other councils in the southeast to their own favourite councils up in the north of England. And throughout their time, our green belt here has been under threat from overdevelopment, cutting across the views of our elected council under Peter Fleming and his colleagues here, who've had to accept housing targets and planning decisions against their wishes imposed on them by central government through their regional agencies in the southeast. We need to change all this. And it's a conservative government that can change all this. And let me explain to you how. We need to change everything. We need to change our economy, we need to change our society, and we need change for our institutions. Our economy first. We have an economy now that people talk of a hung parliament. We have what is virtually a hung economy. Half in, half out of recession. And what do the Labour government do? They propose a jobs tax. At the very point, we should be encouraging our businesses to take those younger people off the dump, to give them their first start in work. <coughs> the Labour government is going to make it harder, more expensive, for businesses to employ more people, and it's going to make those people themselves pay more in national insurance. On the contrary, we should be making this easier. We should be cutting the jobs tax, reducing it. We should be helping small businesses by cutting red tape. And we want to encourage new businesses to take on new people off the unemployment register and we will relieve them of national insurance entirely for the first 10 employees if they do that. We will also back the new technology industries, the green industries of the future. And we will get this economy moving again and start again to create the jobs that our people, our young people, so desperately need. That's the change we will bring to our economy. 